This screencast pertains to Module 5, Lesson 5, where we find that that cubic centimeters are the same as milliliters. That's the basic point of this lesson. I'm starting with the last problem of the homework where it says, on this paper, describe the details of the activities you did in class today. Include what you learned about cubic centimeters and milliliters. Give it an example of a problem you solved with an illustration. Well, the basic point of this lesson was that one cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. Now, what you did in your class, I, I cannot be sure. I know that I had to make some alterations to this lesson because I have not been able to find the rectangular prisms necessary uh, for this lesson. So uh, you might base this upon whatever you did in your class. The last part says, it give an illustration or an example of a problem you solved with an illustration. We might talk about how you found the volume of something using mathematics. So again, we could relate length times width times height and come up with a number. And we could also use a representation of a measure of volume using milliliters. So suppose that my uh, volume of my rectangular prism was, say, 25. And then I would have to show that I have that amount in my beaker here in this case. And you might just take that, this is 25 centimeters cubed, and you might shade in your beaker showing 25 milliliters. Let's go on to some other problems. It says a rectangular fish tank measures 26 by 20 by 18. And again, this is from the problem set. What is the volume in milliliters? Well, the tank is filled to 15 milliliters. We don't want the volume of the tank. We want the volume of the water. So we're going to presume and again, it's not absolutely clear, but I, I am assuming that this is 26 is the length, and the width is 20, and the height is um, 18. So instead of looking at this value here, we're going to look at this value. So we're going to now set up the problem. 26 times 20 times 15. I'm going to solve 20 times 15 first. And that equals 300. Now I need to multiply 26 times 300. And I get a 0 and a 0 and a 18. And I put an extra 0 here, 0, 0. And I get a 6 and I get 7,800. Now, we could also use the strategy here that 3 times 25 is 75. Add one more to that for each of the, uh, add one more for the 6 and do that 3 times. I get a 78 tack on my two zeros. But anyway, my volume is 7,800 milliliters. How many liters? Well, that's 7,800 times 1 milliliter equals 7,800 times 1 thousandth of a liter. And that becomes, I'll draw an arrow, is 7,800 divided by 1,000, and that is 7 and 8 tenths liters. How much more water to get to the top? Well, I know that I have it filled to 18, or 15 rather, and I could fill it to 18, so I have 18 minus 15 equals 3 centimeters. So now I have 26 times 20 times 3, and that equals 26 times 60. I'll multiply 26 times 60, regroup my 3, and I get... 1,560 more milliliters of water to fill that tank. A rectangular container is 25 centimeters long 
and 20 centimeters wide. Now I can find the area of a uh, side of that, right? So my area is 25 times 20, and that equals 500. And what is my uh, what is my height? Well, if I have a, a base of 500, I need to multiply that times the height. And I know that one liter is 1,000 milliliters. And that is the same as 1,000 centimeters cubed. So I have to find the height. And again, we could do that by division. I have 1,000 divided by 500 equals 1,000 over 500 equals 2. So the height is 2 centimeters. So as Johnny filled the container with 30 centimeter cubes, shade the beaker to show how much water that container will hold. Well, again, we know that 1 centimeter cubed equals 1 milliliter. So I think you can easily figure out what we need to shade in this beaker. Finally, homework. A beaker contains 250 milliliters of water. He wants to pour the water into a container that will hold the water. Which of the containers below could he use? Explain your choices. Well, what we need is a container that is either equal to 250 milliliters in volume or greater than that. So what do we have to do? Well we have to find the volume of each of these and again if we look at A and B it's very simple length times width times height and for B and E we are given the area of one of the surfaces we have to multiply it by the other dimension and if we look at D we're missing a value, so you get a free pass on that unless your teacher gave you a value. So again, find the volume of each of these and determine whether they're greater than or equal to 250 milliliters. And of course, again, we know that one milliliter equals one centimeter cubed.